to be confused with the Cutlass Supreme Classic. There's sharp edged rear driver with a wind cheating front wheel drive shape. It comes from the same design team that gave the record breaking aero deal again. The I-Series look is round with clear vacuum fluorescent faces that on the positive side, control positions are much improved over last year. Our only real problem is with the stereo. Its high position makes for great visibility, but a long reach. The automatic climate control works with a set of well-marked buttons. They're easy to reach from the driver's position. The problem is, there's no vent position. If you want just air, you have to open a window. A five-speed manual shifter is standard with the International Series. It's light and notchy, but not bad for a front-drive shifter in a large domestic car. Seating comes in the form of tasteful cloth-covered buckets. Adjustments are extensive, with a manual recline and power for everything from height to lumbar, side bolsters, and even headrests. It's all very thorough and very comfortable. Move to the rear seat, and you can add very unusual to the list. The I-Series features twin buckets instead of the standard bench. Legroom is better than average for a coupe. Headroom is a bit tight for taller folks. A handy center armrest with twin cup holders will be appreciated by the often neglected rear seat passengers. Other Supreme models have a conventional rear bench seat. Back at the tail again, we find a trunk with moderate liftover and more room than we usually expect in a coupe. With all this un oldsmobile like innovation, we were surprised to open the hood and find the corporate 2.8-liter V6. At 125 horsepower and 160 pound-feet of torque, it's a bit small for such a large platform. We had hoped for the 3800 V6, or even the Quad 4, but the Quad is not yet scheduled to appear. At the rate that GM is deploying the Quad 4, it will be obsolete by the time that it is fully available. Despite all this, the Cutlass Supreme International still manages a 0 to 60 time of 9.1 seconds. Quarter mile takes 17 seconds at 79 miles per hour. Unfortunately, power runs out long before the tack hits its red line. We found substantial front end shutter when launching. This is partly the fault of an awkward clutch pedal position that makes it hard to feather the pedal for a clean getaway. As for handling, the Cutlass reminds us of a large version of Chevy's Cavalier Z24. It plows gently, but will sling its tail if you lift off the gas at the proper moment. Steering is light feeling, as we'd expect in an old mobile, but it's more accurate than the steering in most larger GM cars. Overall handling is pretty good, but more power would help here too. In emergency maneuvers, the car wallows lazily instead of blasting clear. We get a much better impression of the Cutlass Supreme International on the highway. Its smooth, soft ride and low 65 decibel interior sound level mark it as more a mature luxury car than a daring sportster. The 22 miles per gallon we got on our mileage loop is also in the big old sedan class. EPA estimates are a little more optimistic at 19 city and 29 highway. The mature feel carries over to braking. The four-wheel disc returned an excellent average of 103 feet from 55 miles per hour. But stability is poor, and the pedal lacks the feel necessary to avoid annoying right-side lockup. ABS is a future option that is needed now. The Cutlass Supreme International starts at $15,644. Our fully loaded test car comes to $16,838. The Honda Prelude SI costs about the same, but offers better performance. It loses out badly, however, on passenger and luggage space. Ford's Thunderbird Turbo Coupe costs more and offers similar space for people and luggage, but it also offers standard anti-lock brakes and overall performance that equals that of a pure sports car. In our safety check, the Cutlass Supreme International passes with front passive restraints, 5 mile per hour bumpers, and radial tires. It misses rear shoulder belts and anti-lock brakes. Hits include the crisp, innovative styling, handsome, comfortable interior, generous room, and comfortable highway ride. Misses are a lack of horsepower, poor dash fit in radio position, and marginal gas mileage. It's not that the Cutlass Supreme is a marginal car. It isn't. It's actually a quite good car. It's just it won't appeal to most performance-oriented buyers. It will appeal to those buyers who want sporty good looks with all the comforts of home which is to say, an Oldsmobile.